the wakeful the wakeful fathers of our church have told us that nipsis the watching of the mind when the mind polices over the type of thoughts that approach and protects itself not to vegetate or daydream about certain things when the mind is constantly protected from the attacks of evil thoughts then the heart of men becomes cleansed over a period of time. It becomes free of passions. The passions are deeply rooted in the heart of the men. The roots of the passions have the heart tangled up in such a way that makes its cleansing very difficult. The wakeful fathers reassure us that no other method can purify the heart other than this method of nipsis. In other words, the constant guarding and watchfulness, wakefulness of the mind not to receive evil images, images of persons or things or past situations, different scenes of sin. From all the baggage that is now accumulated in our memory blanks and collected from the curiosity of the five senses, now, the mind can use these evil images by adding the poison of sin through imagination, and this poison can trickle to the heart, and the heart becomes poison, and this poisoning spreads in the entire existence of men, who now becomes the men of passions. The sinful men, the unclean and filthy men, who has no parisia, has no courage to face up to God. He cannot face God. The Greek word is parisia, the privilege to talk to God and to go to him freely. But through nipsis or wakefulness, which guards the senses, guards the mind, guards the special area of the mind, the area of imagination, when all these images of sin are cut off by the work of nipsis, then the images do not give birth to bad thoughts, and without evil thoughts, sin is avoided in the heart, and the imagination stays pure. When there are no images floating through our mind, and at the same time we keep our mind working on the prayer, then we have the ideal communication with God. It is not a small struggle. It is not as easy as we make it sound here, because the mind never stops working. The mind will keep working the material that we make available to it. Much like the miller, much like the work at the mill, where the miller throws in wheat or rye or barley, whatever goes in, that's what comes out. If someone throws in chaff, only chaff will come out and so on and so forth. This is why it is necessary to watch so when the evil thoughts appear, the sinful images are closing in, we must be ready for battle with the watchfulness of the mind so we can prevent the evil thoughts and not allow filthy images to appear in our own imagination. When we repel these thoughts, then there's no anxiety in the inner men. There's no cause for alarm. On the contrary, when we allow evil thoughts to enter, then we sense alarm and excitement in our, in our inner being, which can lead to many bad consequences. When the mind is kept free from these evil thoughts and filthy images, the devil and sin is impossible to enter. 
And this because everything starts from the mind. When we keep our mind pure, not allowing all these things to provoke us, then the inner house of our heart and soul will be in good condition. Therefore, if we desire the peace of our inner self, our heart and soul, let's work a little now, let's work not to allow the evil thoughts to intrude easily. Naturally, the intrusion of evil thoughts is possible. We cannot always control them because it is natural for a man of passions to have the intrusions of evil thoughts. This does not necessarily mean defeat. We don't fall when we simply have an evil thought, but the fall will take place when we open the door and welcome these evil thoughts to enter inside the living room of our heart and mind. Then we must undertake a great struggle, and unless we fight and resist and get angry with these thoughts, then they will take over and captivate us. And then this will create for us a state of sin which leads to consent. The state of consent equals to the action for the soul. Just like someone can sin with the action of the body, in the same way someone is sinning when the soul reaches a state of consent. This is precisely why the Lord says anyone who sees a person and desires that person, he has sinned in his heart. So adultery can be committed in the heart, fornication can be committed in the heart, just like it is later on committed with a body. But first, the sin hits the heart. So we do have the sin of the heart. And God, who oversees our every thought and every movement, he knows what goes on in the heart. So the person who sins in his heart is under condemnation. This is a great and very serious task to take every precaution not to submit to evil thoughts. It is not very difficult to neutralize these evil thoughts in the beginning, at the beginning. However, it takes much toil and pain to get rid of them once we allow them to make a landing. For example, the door of our house is next to the street and anyone can come and knock on our door, at our door, anytime, a thief, an evil person, anyone can knock to get in. However, if we do not open the door, there is no danger, no big deal. But if we don't look before we open, we don't suspect anything because he may be deceptive in his appearance, or he may use kind words, and we allow him to come in, then the trouble and the struggle and the strife begins because we have to fight to get him out. And if he pushes himself through and he enters deeper into the house, then things become even harder. Now, if this evil man overpowers and ties us up, then we will have a hard time because we, the homeowner, are basically tied hand and feet then the intruder becomes the master of the house. This is how the evil thoughts work. An evil thought will knock at the door, at the door of the mind, in order to enter. When this evil thought knocks, and if we're not practicing wakefulness, then we will allow this thought to come in and bring forth images of a person, things, situations, and from all these things that a man could have seen or heard or touched, etc. And if we don't pay much attention, then this thought will begin to injure the mind. And if we still ignore it, then the result will be for this thought to excite and offend and infect the heart. Once the heart is infected, its pollution begins. And then... It takes a great deal of toil and pain to remove this pollution from the heart. In this way, a person gives the right to the devil. The devil has holdings in the area of our heart through the passions that take root. And the devil does not let go very easily. He's not easily evicted once he moves in with the passions. 
he figures he works so hard to implant these passions on the soul, and he will not give up his roots so quickly. He doesn't want to give up his rights so quickly. And this is why the passions get old and die along with the men. And we see people at the end of their life, at their very old age, to do some very, very bad and insensible things. And someone may ask, why are these people acting like this at the end of their lifetime? Yes, because the men made no effort. This man made no effort whatsoever to free himself from these passions from the years of his youth. And these sinful passions will follow this man to his grave. And then with these accumulated sins, he will face the judgment seat of Christ and things will be very, very harsh for this poor soul. Some people who are ignorant of this science of sciences and work of works, this great technique of venipsis, they say, well, since I didn't actually and physically do the act, since my thoughts were not enacted, then where is the harm? Yes, but the evil deeds do not start by themselves. The body does not sin by itself unless the instruction comes from the heart and the mind. The heart and the mind fall first. So if we guard and protect the mind with the wakefulness and fear of God, with the wisdom that here is where the sliding of the soul begins to take place, then we will protect the heart and the mind. A man sees an object or a person or something and becomes scandalized. Instantly, he calls on the spiritual guard or watchfulness. Or he pulls his eyes away from this image, which he wipes away from his imagination, or he starts the prayer right away and he defends against the evil intruder from slipping into the heart. When does a house stay clean? When the lady takes care of it every day? Or when it is clean once every 10 days or once every 20 days? We all know that when it is kept up with and maintained on a daily basis, then it will be much cleaner in every respect. This also holds true for the soul of men. Our inside house, the heart of men, which is the house of God, the holy altar of the Holy Spirit. The human being is the temple of God, and God lives in this temple. As St. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit of God lives in you? And he who destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. In other words, from our holy baptism, we were reborn. Our soul was reborn by the presence of the Holy Spirit at the time of holy baptism. From that instant, the soul and the heart of men, the soul and the heart of the baptized Christian becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is why we need holy baptism. We receive the grace of the holy baptism within us. This Holy Spirit, this grace that enters the infant at holy baptism, makes the infant holy at that instant, even though the child does not recognize what took place because of the age factor. So the cunning devil, with his craftsmanship and mastery, tries very masterfully and quietly to create some circumstances and begin to lay the necessary groundwork so when the child gets older, his evil work over the years would have taken root. So the accumulation of all these sins over a period of time mask over the grace of the Holy Spirit. All these garbage piles of sin accumulate and bury the grace of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit does not illumine the mind and the man walks in darkness. However, when the wind of God begins to blow, the blessed repentance, the return, the sacrament of holy confession, 
All these work to throw out all the excess baggage of sin. And the heart is freed from this heavy burden. Then the grace of the Holy Spirit is once again activated and its brightness reaches the mind. It illumines the mind and the man returns once again to divine illumination. The people in the world cannot understand this and they have no clue to this ever so important work of anipsis or spiritual warfare. We know that through this work of anipsis or spiritual warfare we can easily reach the cleansing of our heart and freedom from the passions. In a way we can exercise the prayer even in the world.